So clearly, job evaluation is an extension of job analysis. In job analysis, we examine the tasks and responsibilities and content of a job and figure out the knowledge, skills, abilities, and other attributes that are needed to successfully perform that job. And job evaluation takes that information and extends it to determining what should the value of the job be to the organization. It gives us ways to assess value and, and then also look at the relative value of jobs within an organization, thus creating a job-based structure for compensation. So there isn't just one grand algorithm that we can put information in and have it pump out. This is what you should pay a person for a particular job. That is determined organization by organization. And so what we're talking about when we, we do job evaluation is determining the, the relative value of a job. But it does provide us with systematic ways of assessing the value of a job within an organization and creating a structure of compensation that is job-based for the organization. Now, that value is based on a lot of the information we get from a job analysis, like job content and the skills required. But in job evaluation, we, we go beyond that and also then look at what are the value of this content and skills to the organization? And, and what is the culture of that organization and the strategy of that organization? And what is the external market doing in terms of paying for similar jobs? Combining these different factors can be challenging, but it also, if done correctly, can be a real strength to the organization. It can be a way that we align human resource management with strategy in a way that creates a competitive advantage if it's done well. Now, we need to understand the content of the work. And so that means, you know, what are the tasks that are performed? How does the work get done? We can derive that information through many different sources. There are standard databases like the ONET that are a great resource, but I, I think you'll find that there are limitations. Not every job that exists in organizations is cataloged in ONET. And so you have to be prepared to do some tailoring and to perform job analysis to uh, determine the job content. By looking at the job content and looking at it relative to different jobs in the organization, this gives us a way of having there be an internal consistency or an internal logic to how we pay different jobs within the organization. Of course, we can also look at the external market and we can determine the value of jobs through many means. Again, ONET is a wonderful source for that information. Again, you may not have it for every job, but you can find benchmark jobs and in ONET and find their value in that ONET profile. But again, you may have to go beyond that, and, and many times there are other sources for market information like salary surveys. However, the structure that we get from the job content may not be perfectly aligned with the structure that we might get from the external market. And so we also have to be prepared to make some adjustments based on those differences. Again, there is some difference between what we typically find from the job content and what we find from the external market. But it's nice to think that there might be some logic to the way different jobs are paid by 
looking at the demands of the job, the conditions of the job, the skills that are needed to do it, and, and relative to other jobs, it provides some measure of rationale for this differences that we may observe. But the external market isn't necessarily strictly logical because we're looking across organizations and we're looking at different levels of analysis and we, we can't necessarily find a perfect fit. But there should be some logic that is afforded to this analysis of job content and, and its connection to the what we observe to be the value of jobs in the external market. So I think that you know, what we learn from the external market and what we learn from our internal analysis of job content is important and they're a good test of one another. Again, may result in some discrepancies. We need to carefully consider why do we have those discrepancies and, and maybe there's a good strategic reason to have that discrepancy. Perhaps that discrepancy is in the favor of the organization. Perhaps there's something in the organizational culture that uh, allows for that discrepancy, and it would be perhaps inconsistent with the culture if there wasn't some difference there. So we shouldn't necessarily too strictly want these two uh, sources of job value to perfectly align with one another, but we might, through looking at the discrepancies between what we learn through information about the job content and the external market, it might tell us a little bit about how we should adapt our compensation to fit with strategy. Now, we all know that compensation can be a touchy subject. People really care about what they're paid, and their uh, how they're paid compared to others uh, takes on other dimensions of, of, of status and, and other concerns that people have. So it's often very important that we can justify the uh, pay that is given to uh, different jobs in an organization. Job evaluation provides a systematic and rigorous approach to determining the value of a job. But we have to understand that that's part of what we're delivering is the perception that things have been done fairly according to technical standards. And so people will become aware of what those technical standards are and, and hold us accountable to those things. So it's very important that you know we study this material and execute it with precision. Oftentimes, we in an organization will want to outsource the uh, a compensation study, not because necessarily we can't do it internally, but it's good to have an, uh, an objective third party. And, and sometimes when we're dealing with a union organization, there is a negotiation of who will be doing that job evaluation. and It'll be a party that's accept acceptable to both the union and the management. So we should focus on the differences between different approaches to job evaluation. If we look at ranking classification and the point systems, they have uh, each one advantages and disadvantages. So ranking is a very simple approach to ordering job descriptions from the most highly valued to the organization to the least highly valued, or, or you could rank in terms of how much does this job description contribute to our organizational goals, uh, and, and which is the least. Now, that's kind of simple ranking. Uh, alternation ranking is, is a fairly simple approach. When you get into paired comparison, that is a more detailed approach. It's, it's making judgments about each job against each other job. And, and so that increase, however many jobs you have, that then increases the number of total 
comparisons that you're making. So again, it's it's simple for the most part. It's cheap, easy to understand and to get others to do, but it has some drawbacks because the criteria for making the decision or the ranking is, is not always very clear. You have to, if you're involved with this, be knowledgeable about every job that is being studied in, in order to, to make that relative value determination. Because you don't have clear criteria and, and because maybe it seems too simple and subjective, you may be challenged to defend the decisions made by this, uh, by some that are unhappy with the results. Classification is a way for us to reduce the number of jobs into some commonalities. And so with classification, you define a series of classes over a range of jobs. These are things that differentiate between different jobs. And so this type of classification gives some structure to the, the compensation system, and it, it can help to have employees understand the different types of job classes. Um, but at the same time, these types of descriptions can be troublesome, especially if they are, are not specific or precise enough. Jobs do change. And as they evolve, people question, am I still part of this classification? When you take on this type of process, you often also have to have a process for appeal where you can examine the responsibilities of a job and how they change over time and, and whether a job is properly classified. Point method is the most detailed approach, but it also provides the richest amount of information for developing a structure for pay within an organization. There are many different types of point methods. There are consulting firms that uh, have their own proprietary methods. Um, the Hay Group is, is very famous for their point method approach. But the common to all the approaches are, one, that there are compensable factors. These are factors that have value to the organization. And usually they uh, address some kind of uh, working condition, job content, or competency that you need to perform the job. So for instance, in terms of like job content, you we might be looking at a compensable factor being whether there are hazardous conditions when you're doing a job. Then those factors that we determine would have some degree of high and low associated with them. So, you know, in terms of hazardous conditions, there could be an extreme where, you know, there's life-threatening conditions to a low where there is no unreasonable working conditions uh, that someone faces. And then you have some weights to reflect the relative importance of, of that factor by taking that, by identifying and defining these compensable factors and their degree and giving them some weight, you can determine the relative value of a job based on its total points across all the compensable factors. This is a way that provides enough detail that uh, we can make uh, changes uh, that are consistent with the strategic goals of the organization. How we define compensable factors and how they're scaled and then how they're weighted are all things that we can do intentionally with a mind to what type of strategic goals are we trying to achieve. And so in this way, we can align very intentionally this, this pay structure to those strategic goals.